Hello fellow RVers, this is Gary and Sharon with Rough Road RV Life. We like looking at freedom. And we had a question from one of our viewers. They are just starting RV Life and they asked us, can you do a video more explaining your comments relative to what you've cut down on, what you first started with as RVers? So we're gonna tell you how we dropped a ton. We dropped a ton, literally, in the beginning. So a little bit of backstory in case you haven't, you're just now finding us. We sold our home of 30 plus years and moved into our RV. We did not have a storage unit. We did not keep a second home. Everything that we needed went into that RV. Yes. So as you can imagine, it might've been a little too much. It was trash, keep and donate. And the keep file obviously was a little too high. Here's the thing. When you are starting out, you don't really know what you need. We've never lived in an RV full-time before. We had a weekend camper, but we had never lived in an RV. So here's some things that we dropped in the beginning. We realized, eh, don't need it. Yes. It's constant and ongoing. Mm -hmm. So even though we've dropped a ton, we are always reevaluating. You just got rid of how many bags of uh, clothes, Gary? Three bags of clothes. Three bags of clothes. So, and it's not that it was just clothes that he didn't need anymore. I had to make room for my shoes. Clothes he didn't need to make room for his shoes. Okay, so on the outside of our RV, we ha had a heavy duty jack. Uh, one, wait, was it one ton? Ten, Ten ton. ton. Ten ton jack. And I knew at that point after a year that I was not going to use that 10 ton jack to change the tire on my motorhome. Nope. So not off, gonna happen. Off it went. That's why I have a roadside assistance. We also toted around a chainsaw. Wasn't gonna chainsaw wood for fire. Now, and even if we boondock, I'm not sure if it's okay to go chainsawing down trees and whatnot. So no, it was unneeded, unnecessary. Other things that we carried around were tools, like tools that we thought we would need. We had a lot of tools. We had tools. My dad had had tools. And I realized that I have enough tools now that I carry that I can do minor repairs, simple repairs, but anything that's major, it's gonna be probably done by a mechanic shop or by some type of RV repair shop. And here's the thing. So it, you may have guessed, we are not minimalists. We're like not bare bones, but RV life helps no. you become minimalist <clears throat> thinking. So our tools that we had, we probably had some redundant tools. Yeah. Looking at me, you think I'm a maximalist. <laughs> and also know that, and you, if you ever listen to the minimalists, they have a podcast, but anything that you can go out and buy, I think for $25 or less, you, you don't need it. <laughs> then just go buy it. So kind of keep that in mind too as we're going through this list. We had a giant screen room, which was a pain to put up. It was one of those old school type screen rooms, not like the new modern up screen yeah, rooms. Yeah. And it was, you needed like a toolkit to put that thing up. And our first trek was out west and the wind blew and blew and blew. So there was just no need to fight with that thing. And it was taking up a lot of space. Yep. So that went bye-bye. It did. Now I know some people use a screen room and I'm sure they have l uh, more lighter weight options now, but this is just, these are just the things that we got rid of in the beginning. We had a propane fire pit, which I loved. I loved our propane fire pit. It connected to a five gallon propane tank and we would use it on chilly nights, instant fire when we're ready to go in, no worrying about coals or embers or anything, just turn it off and go in. But it took up a lot of space. It took up space in the RV for the fire pit itself. And then we had to, to lug the propane tank around in the car. So since then, I've been looking for a smaller version of that. And so if any of you know of a smaller version of a little fire pit that doesn't take up a lot of space. I have missed it, but I did pass it on to someone else who could use it. So goodbye, propane fire pit. Speaking of propane, we carried around little propane bottles because we had a propane grill. We had a propane camp stove and they used the little bottles. 
and we never used it because we just don't cook outside. Not saying we never cook out. We will throw some charcoals on the grill and cook out from time to time, but it's not a daily thing. Yes, I guess the, the test is, does this warrant the space? Because right. at RV, you will be asking yourself that a lot. Does this item serve me enough <laughs> to take up this space? Yes. And a lot of times you'll find it really doesn't. And in our case, the grill and the camp stove did not. Also, redundancy, we had an electric stove top because, you know, our propane might go out. We might need to cook. So we had this two burner stove top in addition to our camp stove, in addition to our grill, in addition to our stove that's inside our RV, our built-in stove. So that went. On the outside stuff, when we first started, two kayaks on the roof, three bicycles on the back. We realized that we didn't need quite all those toys, so we parted it down to one kayak and two bikes. So another thing that I also used to haul around with me was I carried a lot of extra oil. I carried a couple of jugs of death fluid at the beginning because I really didn't know how much death fluid my RV, was, my motorhome was going to burn, how often I would need it. So I had, and you know, the, the, uh, the, the cartons of death fluid are pretty big. But I soon came to realize that I'm not using as much as I thought I would. And since it's sold everywhere, if I get down to like two bars, that's my measuring point. I get down to two bars, I go buy two jugs, and I refill it. And I didn't need all the extra oil and all those extra fluids I was hauling around with me either. Because once again, it's available everywhere. And that fluid takes up a lot of weight. In this case, it was weight and space. Mm -hmm. Now those are the major things that come to mind here seven, six, seven years later. Yeah. And but there were like miscellaneous items. Like I know we had from our sticks and bricks we had a lot of spray bottles that I'm like, oh we could use these to put stuff yeah. in and use, but we did not need a dozen of them. I hauled a big shovel around with me. Never mm -hmm. used it. Yeah. So and for so for us, we didn't use it that first year, purge. Whenever we come back to Florida and we do our maintenance on our RV and all those things, we got to go through the bins and say, what do we need? What do we not need? So one other thing that was stored in our bins, I had a lot of backpacking gear. I'm a backpacker. I could take out a small troop of Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts or Scouts or friends, which I would do. I would carry enough kayaking gear or enough backpacking gear. So if I took anybody out, I, I could supply them. Well, when it's just he and I traveling and he's not going with me, I only need mine. So I have mine in a backup in case I meet with one of my kids and they want to go, but that's it. So I had to like leave all that behind. Actually, I left it in my daughter's safekeeping so that, you know, it, it would be there if we ever decided to go backpack, family backpacking trip. But I, that was, that was hard to let go because, you know, if you ever start backpacking, you start with certain gear and then you, you upgrade and then you upgrade, but there's nothing wrong with the old gear. It's just a little bit heavier. You just, so any backpackers out there, you know what I'm talking about. Just to put that in perspective, I had a half a bay for fishing. She had two bays in the whole hatch of the car for backpacking. Moving on into the RV. Fishing. Fishing equipment. A lot takes up. So anyway, don't give up your hobbies. I have heard, well, you don't need your art supplies. You don't need this and you don't need that. Well, yeah, I do need that because I am going to paint. I am going to draw. He is going to fish. And I am going to backpack. And I'm going to hike. I'm going to kayak. So don't give up those things for space. But look where you can find space for those things. And then watch the redundancy thing. Inside, inside will be like this. Woo, 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 woo. And the reason why I say that is, you will get so very tired of moving a thing to get to a thing and putting back the thing. So you start really looking at, do I really need this? Does this warrant the space? How can I make this better? So some of the first things that we got rid of was my stuff. She said, those guitars and amplifiers got to go. So I said, okay. He's lying. <laughs> so I got rid of like two or three guitars and an amp or two. 
Now listen, the guitar. The I had to make room for her back backpacking stuff that went from the outside to the inside. That way, that's how she made more room on the outside. Okay, a, a story about that. A real, okay. real quick comment about that. We realized that one of our bays leaked, and our Christmas stuff got wet. My backpacking gear got wet, and you know, wet, dark places equals mold and ruin. So yes, I did bring in my important backpacking stuff and we looked at storage so that I could bring that in. I did that and I got rid of some things to do that. So he has a guitar that he wants. He has gifted guitars and I guess gifted them pretty much, right? Yeah, and mostly to family and yeah. I just gave an amplifier away to my... We found a, a small amplifier that works great in the RV, so we use that. Right in the beginning, we knew that the big table, we had a table that went into a hole in our RV. Was We had a pedestal table. Yeah, it was a pedestal table. It was too much. It was very heavy. And it so, was huge. Yeah, so that was one of the first things to go. We also have two dogs. They're 50, now they're, well, at the time they were smaller, but now they're 57, almost 60 pound, Husky Hound sisters. And we had their big, large crates that we would pull down at night for them to go night night and we would put them behind the passenger seat and that took up a lot of space and they didn't really need them no they outgrew them yeah they they, they really we would have if we'd have kept them we'd have had to buy bigger crates because Tara would go to bed in hers and hang out <laughs> the front so when we were in Colorado at my daughter's house I, I unloaded them and threw them in her garage and said here they're yours now <laughs> Pro tip, when visiting your family, just kind of like have your box yeah. ready and leave it in their garage. Yep. Shh. <laughs> so we started off with a big, giant, full-size Keurig coffee maker. And since me and my wife, we every morning we will drink between us a 12 cup pot of a coffee. A full pot of coffee. Yeah. And the Keurig thing, and I like Keurig, and I got nothing against Keurig, but mm -mm. going back and forth for the for another cup of coffee, another cup of coffee, when I could just pour it out of the, the uh, carafe, we decided we would rather have the carafe than the Keurig. So the big Keurig went away, and we replaced it with a smaller 12-cup coffee pot. Right, and the Keurig was huge. It was. It really took up a lot of counter space. We loved our Keurig. That's why yeah. we kept it with us. We're like, oh, we'll take it with us. But you start looking at space, like I said, what is glaring at you? We had our trash can. I really liked our trash can. It, you know, it, it wasn't one of the fancy ones that's automatic, but it was a full size, the big ones, and it took up a wall of our RV. And we really, we realized we really didn't need it because usually there's a dumpster at a campground. Sometimes there's trash cans right in front of your campsite. So it just didn't warrant its space. So that went away, and now we have a smaller trash can, an eight gallon I think trash it's eight can. Gallon. Yeah, it's right under our sink, out of the way, super convenient. And we just take our smaller loads, no great big, if you've ever tried to pull a stuffed 13 gallon <laughs> bag of trash out, it's heavy. So. Now it's quick and easy. TV trays, we had a couple of bamboo TV trays, which I really liked, but they did take up a lot of space. And since we kept them in a bay, he really didn't like them. And we, we didn't use them enough to warrant keeping them. So again, when you move into your RV, you might not realize how many of things you need. And we had too many of some things. We had too many blankets. They were just everywhere because we had dogs and the dogs like to lay on the blankets. So we would have blankets here and blankets there and we always moving blankets. And we had extra blankets in case those got dirty and there's too many blankets. Too many clothes. We had too many clothes. I had just left, I had a lot of professional clothes. So I, cause I just retired and I kept them because we had just retired and I'm like, well, I might need my clothes. So I hung on to some shoes, too many shoes, too many clothes. And that is a constant thing you will find because your clothes will get old. You're, you, you'll realize I never wear these shoes. I have pared down my clothes and shoes so much. 
I'm about to do it again because I realized I see cute dresses and I like them better than the dresses that I hung on to. So I'm going to get rid of my old dresses and buy a cute new dress. That's yep. my plan. One in, one out. And I did realize one thing. I used to hang my clothes like my shirts up on hangers. And I realized it took a lot of space. And I realized that if I didn't use the hangers or folding, if I rolled my shirts and my shorts up in nice rolls, I could layer them and I could get a lot more in there as opposed to trying to deal with hangers. Yes, when we first started off, that's another thing we got rid of are those space-saving hangers. We bought the thin space-saving hangers so we could hang clothes up, but our closet space is so small, it was not practical. Our space-saving hangers went and we do use baskets rolled. And we roll them, they don't wrinkle. Yeah, so works see? perfectly. You might see us wrinkle sometime. But we're camping. Good. Just a little bit. But anyway, they but they a lot- They look at me and they see wrinkles, they say, he's camping. But so a lot, you know. but a lot of times you put your clothes on and the wrinkles just come out. I also have a wrinkle release that I use. I do not carry an iron. And not, we're talking about the clothes, not, not not me. The wrinkles stay there. The clothes might drop out. Right. <laughs> okay. No matter how long I stay in the sun. Oh well. But as as far as ironing, we don't carry an iron. We never started off with an iron. I did not iron in my sticks and bricks because I hate it. So. I know some people do. So like I said, when you're used to moving something to get to something to get to something, too many things in the kitchen. Too many. You only need what you need. We, we pared down what we thought we would need, but then also realized as we went along that, no, we didn't need this and we didn't need that. We didn't need this pan. I had extra frying pans. I really only use one frying pan. But we had pared down. I started off with several frying pans and several other pots and pans. And it was just too much. We didn't use it, so it went away. Yep. Utensils and all those kind of things. You can cook a lot of variety in a cast iron frying pan. Yeah. And I can. I have a three burner stove and I can use all three burners. Yep. So no problem. And even have something in the oven going. And sometimes I hear the question on the forums, what kind of dishes to use? We use Corel Ware. Uh, I find that Corel Ware, they're, they're virtually like, they're like battleship proof, you know, they're they're virtually unbreakable. They are. They're very sturdy. They wash easy and they hold up well. So uh, we do like Corel wear. Yeah, Corel doesn't break. We actually had one break and we're like, how did that happen? But yeah, that was after, after six five, years. Six years, yeah. And half of our Corel that we have came from our sticks and bricks. Mm -hmm. So it is like way old. And that was one of the older ones. And then we did buy a new set. But we have enough. If we have a few people over, we can they have something yeah it does it fit in the container it fits in the drawer so it stays if it doesn't fit in the drawer it goes so think along those lines think of your container right linens that can go along with blankets we just had too many of those household things that we didn't know that we didn't need so they went bye-bye i have to say a word about mementos sentimental items Oh, I don't have a lot of mementos, and the few I did have, she made me get rid of so she'd have room for hers. So, you know, basically I have a stand for my guitar, and that's it. Oh, I have a picture. Drop in the comments if you feel sorry for Gary. I do have one picture of uh, Brian Wilson from the Beach Boys signed a, a pick guard. Oh, yes. So I do have that on the wall. Drop in the comments if, if, if you think Gary is untruthful sometimes. <laughs> Grandpas never tell lies. <laughs> I had to really think long and hard, and some of those mementos may now be in garages of my children. So just put them in there. Oh, in the pictures, you know, I scanned the pictures, but also if I scanned so one of the children's pictures and their kids, that went in their garage. So everybody got gifted pictures. I know they hated to see me coming, but... So I have pared those down over the years and now I just have those special meaningful things up around my RV that fit with our RV that are usable or there for looks. Like a picture that my daughter drew of my mom and dad's home and that's framed and on the wall. Mount Washington when I hiked the Appalachian Trail is framed and on the wall. Gary fishing framed and on the wall. Just those 
couple of paintings, things that my mom and dad had. So you can have mementos and display them, but it's unnecessary to have so much that you don't have room for what you are using. Okay, so we talked about what we dropped and it's ongoing. Just know that RV life, that purging is going to be ongoing and con continuous means the same thing, but you're always going to be analyzing. Do I really need this thing? Yes or no? Maybe. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. If there's anything that you, that we didn't mention here that you took away from your RV, drop that in the comments so others can learn who's watching this video. They may pick something up. We may pick something up. We're always learn looking forward to learning from each other. I expect to see a lot of positive votes on my side. And is Gary truthful? <laughs> I expect to see a lot of yeses. <laughs> or I'll play a song and sing out of tune. Or you ask it's a people. It's bad enough when I sing into. <laughs> That's funny. Well, we need a clip of you playing. <laughs> out of tune. <laughs> so we hope you and found you just need a clip. We hope you found this helpful. If you enjoy seeing videos like this, go ahead and like the video, leave a comment, answer our question or whatever, and subscribe. Subscribe and keep up with our journeys. We, we were a little bit delayed starting our journey this year because of him, and uh, but all is well. We're clear to go, and we'll be sharing some campground reviews soon. So take care, fellow RVers. This is Gary and Sharon, Rough Road RV Life. We like looking at freedom. Hope to see you on the road someday. Safe travels. Bye.